All right, I'm going to begin by calling the uh, first public hearing to order for September 5th. But before we <clears throat> go much further than that, let's rise and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So this is a public hearing for Tuesday, September 5th, 2017. It's been officially noticed for 6.30 p.m. at the town hall here for under RSA 3195-B to accept and expend unanticipated funds from the additional highway block grant in the amount of $91,992.34 from the state of New Hampshire. So, do we need a, um, how do we need a motion to call this to order other than what I just said? So I think uh, we need some background on this probably if, uh, does the road agent want to tell us just quick on the background of this block grant? And yeah, good evening, Thank Mike Pavero, road agent. Um, these funds were distributed across the state based upon size of town and, and uh, population of town roads. So every city or town in New Hampshire got um, funds allocated to them. And it seems like, and we've got some literature that was sent to us, the town has it, that there was a $30 million, um, I, I guess, funds that weren't spent. And they allocated this throughout the state, and we got the 91000 which is tremendous. That's it in a nutshell. And I think, Mike, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we discovered, because we went back and asked them if we had a deadline to spend. Yeah, there's no, there's no deadline. And we were, all the road agents were concerned that yeah. those funds needed to be used by the end of this calendar year, yeah. but that's not the case. So in other words, since the paving season is slowly coming to an end, yep. we don't have to all of a sudden run around. Right. And, yeah. yeah, and we've got, a, we've got a schedule in place for reconstructing the roads in town, so we'll stay with that and right. we'll just be able to do a little more next year, that's all. Right, excellent. All right. So I guess <clears throat> we have a lot of the public here tonight, which is great. But on just on this subject, so just on the highway block grant, do we have any other public comment on this? We'll invite folks who do have public comment throughout these public hearings. We need you to come to the podium because of the microphone. They can hear you on television. As I always say, um, we have millions of viewers out there that watch every time. So uh, any other, no public comment? This is a good thing. This is money coming into the town, so I don't think there'll be much concern. Any of the board want to weigh in on this? I just like the fact that it's not our tax dollars that's bringing the money into the town. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was at one point. At one point it was. <laughs> yeah. The bulk of it came from the supplementary residence grant. Um, it dealt with all. Jim, you need to speak up, please. The bulk of it came from Volkswagen <laughs> after their settlement with the state over the smog control and air pollution devices on the cars. So the good thing is this is money coming back and it's always a good thing. It doesn't happen every <coughs> year and we can spend this on some good projects in town. So could I have you? I have a sheet here. Oh, okay, we do. I should have also mentioned that. We just need you to introduce yourself so we can put you in yeah. the minutes as a There's public comment. There's a pen right there if you could print your name for me. Perfect. I can just state it for the record. Uh, my name is Wes Gunderson. I just had a question. Is, is there any restrictions on the usage of the funds that are being? So there are restrictions. And just so I don't get them wrong, Mike, do you want to just tell us quickly? Because they're not very... They're not like long restrictions or anything like that, but they are restricted. Yeah, the restrictions are the same as any of our highway block grant money. It can only be used on highway projects or highway work. Yeah. Can't, the funds can't be used for anything else. Uh, um, I can't come up with an example. But, well, if we wanted to pave yeah, right. the uh, town hall parking lot, right. 
you, we can't do it. It's got to be used for roadways, yeah. culverts, drainage, anything related to the highway infrastructure. Uh, plowing. Plowing, it, yeah. you, can, you can use it for plowing. I yeah. hope we never get to that point because right. Right. I have right. much more other things I'd like to do right. with it. So. But good question. Thank you for yeah. that question. All right, any other public comment? So I think at this point, I'm going to put this out up to a vote. If there's a motion. Close the public. So we close the public hearing before we vote, vote, right? So I'm going to, uh, is there a motion to close? Was that a motion to close, Jim? Declare it closed. I'm gonna declare it closed yeah. then, thank you. Get a little coaching on the side here tonight. So I'm gonna declare the public hearing portion closed. <clears throat> and now I'll, I'll ask if the board has any motions on this subject. I'll move the acceptance of the, I'm not gonna say the number, the money received under SB 38 for town roadways and associated expenses. All right, is there a second? I will second that. Okay, Lisa, there's a second. Any discussion? So all in favor? Aye. 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 So that's unanimous. All right, so are we, we're then moving on. We have one more public hearing. Get this one out. <coughs> Two more public hearings. Yeah. Two more, is it? Mm -hmm. So the next uh, public hearing I'm gonna call to order. This was also posted. The Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, September 5th, beginning at 6.45 p.m., so we are just about right, mm -hmm. uh, to make public comment and act upon the following item to determine if 13 trees along Gale Village Road, which has or have been designated as a scenic road, be removed to widen the road per RSA 231-157 and RSA 231-158. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna put you on the spot again. You're the tree warden. Can you give us just some quick background and then we'll ask for public comment? <clears throat> well, I'm gonna de defer from the tree warden part and just keep it strictly highway road and, and um, road agent. Uh, there's a section of Gale Village Road. I went in front of the Conservation Commission, I don't know, three or four weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, regarding these trees. Uh, the reason I flagged those trees, and I could, and I'm not going to, we're here for a public meeting tonight to hear everybody's concerns, I could take those trees. Because technically in the roadway and in the right of way of the roadway, there are safety hazards. There's a section of that road that narrows down to about 16 foot 5 inches wide. That's not an acceptable width of a roadway for current and, and commuters. You, you couldn't get a bus and an oil truck down there at the same time right now. To be quite honest with you, I don't think you could get two pickup trucks down there side by side right now. Um, so th that's the intent. We're taking the minimum amount of trees that we need to. The other intent or the other reason for this is I reclaim these roads, which is a function of we bring in a grinder, we grind the asphalt into the gravel, we go down about 14 inches deep, if there's any root or root groups in that road, and I'm sure there are because these trees are right alongside the road, we will destroy that root group. And you know we'll just end up with a problem down the road of a tree that's dying because we've destroyed half of the root system. So for both of those reasons, I've flagged those trees to have those trees come down. I, I will tell you, if the consensus tonight is they don't, we don't take the trees, that's fine. I mean, I'm not going to kick and scream and jump up and down. I will tell you this. I'm going to patch that road, and I'm not going to rebuild it because I'm not going to take taxpayers' money in town and put into a road that doesn't meet current road use parameters. So I will pa just patch the potholes that are in there. That road will stay the way it is, and we'll go to another road that's scheduled in town and redo that one. It's not my intent. I wanted to finish Gale Village Road this year because we did half last year. We'd do the other half this year and overlay it, and you would have a good road for many, 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 you know, 30, 40, 50 years. That's it in a nutshell. 
All right. Thank you. Yep. So we'll. Mike, <coughs> quick <coughs> I have a quick question for Mike. Yeah. If you just patch it, how long was that, would that last? You'll patch it every year. You'll put pothole patches in there. Okay. It'll never stop. And you can't, if you overlay the road, which is another technique, the overlay is another waste of money because the road is deteriorated. The road is what is, is collapsed. There's no crown to the road. There's no shape to the road. There's no drainage for the road. Uh, one of the biggest killers for asphalt is water to sit and puddle on it during the winter freeze. And once it starts to get into the cracks, and you're done. You, you just can't. You, you can't stay up with it. So you gotta put a crown on the road and shape the road and get drainage on the road and they have a pretty good shot of survival. Okay. All right. All right thank you. Thanks. So we're, we're gonna invite public comment now. As we said earlier, we need you to come up here to, my, to the microphone so everybody can hear you and then you can write your name uh, for the minute, so. Uh, could we hear from conservation first since yeah, this is under their purview? Trish, did you wanna speak to that? Conservation did meet with Mike, and again, he said it in a nutshell, we are here to preserve the environment, our natural resources, our habitat, both environmental, wildlife, um, and the scenic roads, which comes under our jurisdiction. After much conversation, conservation feels that, although we love our scenic roads, the fact that he has just labeled 13 trees, we all went down, we looked at the trees, um, the RSA says trees that are 15 inches or more in circumference at a four foot level height, those are the ones that have conservation needs to approve. The others don't need our approval. So again, for safety issues, conservation felt that, you know, heaven forbid there was a motor vehicle accident and there was ambulances and fire trucks and then you need a tow truck, it all, it, it can't happen. You might actually wait for an emergency response if you can't get in on one side of the road because of the width of the vehicles are there to the other side, which could be three minutes, five minutes, could be a life-saving issue. We just felt that, obviously we wanna hear from the residents, but we felt if it was a safety issue, we would have to go in favor of taking down the minimum amount of trees necessary in order for, to keep the safety of the residents. All right, thank you. All right, so if there's anybody else that wanted to, all right, Tony. I'm Tony Romanowski, <clears throat> resident of Gale Village Road. Where's my name? It seems to me that the RSA is pretty clear. It says eminent safety concern for the public. I, I don't see an eminent, eminent to me means it's gonna happen now. I don't see an eminent safety concern. I've lived there now on 50 years. I haven't had an accident. I've seen two pickup trucks pass. I've seen oil trucks pass school buses. You have to pull off to the side a little bit and slow down. The residents petitioned a number of years ago to lower the speed limit and were denied. I don't think that was right. We should get it down to 25 because of the rapid development in Newton. We've had commuter traffic zipping down Gale Village and Maple to avoid the curve and go past New Boston Road. We, I've stood in the middle of the road and slowed people down. And I've had a finger flipped at me. I've had beer cans thrown at me. Slow down, slow down. People are in a hurry. Um, we should slow down. It's a scenic road. I, I believe in the 60s, residents of Gale Village Road. 1972, and, uh, actually. Well, okay. Yeah. It, it's been a while. Yes, it has. Residents saw a need to preserve the town. Um, and I appreciate it. I moved to that area specific because it's a junction of three scenic roads, Maple, Curryville, and Gale Village, and Goulds Hill is just up the road on the other end of Maple. So I'm fortunate to live there. I knew there would be conservation land for Mr. Sergeant, the lumber mill, who is now the Kingston Police Station. Um, and you must be aware of the conservation land. It's up on behind Gale Village Road, fronting Peter Nichols down to um, the McGowans, right to the Kingston Police Station. There's deer hunting, a lot goes on in there. 13 trees, well, I owned a small portable mill. There may be 13 stumps, but there are 20, 21 trees of the designated size that shouldn't be removed by the RSA. It's quite clearly says, if you cut the trees down, you will have 13 stumps in the ground. But if you lay the trees side by side and count board feet, if you know what I mean by that reference, you will have 20 or 21 trees of decent size. 
uh, it'd be more of a public safety concern as old poison ivy growing up those trees. Um, if you stand in the water dripping, you can get poison ivy if you're sensitive to it. Remove the poison ivy. Water issue, Mike mentioned. It, it pools up on the house side. Um, I don't see it pooling in the road. Uh, ice is up, sometimes it's an issue. Slow down. It's a scenic road. We designated only six or seven, I think Town Hall Road too, seven roads as scenic roads. And we're losing the battle. We, one after the other, we seem to not see a cul-de-sac that can't be approved or a variance that won't be granted. I don't think the Nordic Wood Road should have gone into Gale Village Road. That only had 90 foot give or take frontage. They drained six vernal pools and a three season water pool in order to bla they blasted dynamite, which was unannounced, for two weeks. And that was allowed and even called it from the planning board at the time, this, this is a really good plan. And all objections were pushed aside. I'm hearing this safety, we love our town, sorry Trish. <clears throat> but I've heard we're gonna preserve the rural character, we have to watch our water, we have to protect our resources, and yet we constantly cut, develop, and build. The residents mostly of Newburgh, uh, uh, Gale Village Road, the long-term residents have all been there because it's a nice area. The new residents, the ones I've spoken to, are all happy to be in a nice wooded area. I've gotten no response from anybody who thinks the trees should be cut down. I heard, Mike, I like you, you work hard. I heard a slight threat. If you don't do this, I'm only gonna patch the road. Waste no, your money. A it, well, you're, I know you're gonna do it, but it sounds like a threat to me. Threat. It sounds like a threat. It doesn't sound like well, then in order to do my job, but this is what I'm going to do. It, vehicles pass each other if they slow down. The school buses have had no trouble maneuvering that road. My daughter uses school buses. My, uh, the people who built the geodetic dome on that road, I helped build that dome. Those four kids, we had no issues. The town is bigger. Why don't we slow down the traffic pattern? Why don't we <laughs> do, we just don't have to cut all the trees down and pay a, 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 a to make the road wider, I see no need. And again, the RSA, if you read it, which I certainly hope you have, is very clear. Eminent safety factor, not perceived or potential or somewhere down the line something awful may happen. You can't live in fear. That's how terrorists win. They get you afraid and you'll do anything to avoid issues. Let's keep our scenic roads scenic. We're running out of a town. We're running out of a nice small town that has character. We're running out of character rapidly. The, 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 just a little thing, you run down our scenic roads. Just recently, one of our major developers cleared two house lot distances. He was supposed to put in a driveway. Uh, the RSA quite clearly says, we'll be liable for damages, whoever does the problems. I saw nobody following up with that. He, um, on Heath Street, that's a scenic road. Four or five house lots cleared along Heath Street. Pretty close, just past our uh, Greeny Park. That should have never been allowed to happen, and I didn't hear of any repercussions to the developer or whoever cut down all the trees. Now, maybe it's truly, in the true sense of the word, ignorance, not knowing the law, not knowing that the scenic roads are protected, or it's arrogance, one or the other. In ignorance, I understand you educate people. Perhaps when new residents come into town, they could be told you're living in a scenic road, there are restrictions on what you can do to your trees. In the same way, when you move into a condominium, you're told you can't hang your laundry, blah, blah, blah. If you don't want to live with those restrictions, then you don't buy in that area. Um, it's a beautiful street. Like I said, I've nigh on 50 years I've lived there. We've never had an accident. Uh, one Gail son hit the telephone pole. That telephone pole, it was really close to the road with the big rock across from it, from the paving of Gale Village, narrows the road at that point. Um, at number nine, Gale Village, I believe it is. A, la a large rock was placed and left. I don't really have an issue with that, but I'm not quite sure why it was put across from a telephone pole to further narrow the road. <sighs> so I just have, I have a enough. question I, for that, you. That's enough. I, I've said my say. Okay. okay well, Matt. Just a question for you, Tony. Um, you know, you talked about the statute says imminent threat. Um, so what I'm, what I'm wondering is, is just out of curiosity, how would you define uh, an imminent threat? You just it's happening us. now, tonight, it's happening. That, the yeah. hur Hurricane Irma is an imminent threat. It's happening right now. Yeah, but I'm not talking about Hurricane no, Irma. No, I'm, I'm describing your word. I'm, I'm giving right. you a description. Well, I, imminent means it's happening right now. Right, I, believe me, I, I understand exactly what the word is, but I'm, 
I'm wondering, just because you, you've said you don't believe what the, the road agent just described to be an imminent threat, as far as the trees go, what would you term an imminent threat in terms of trees on Gale Village Road? Like what, what would be the, if you see where I'm getting at, what would so. be the turning point for you? Oh, if they were dead? If they were truly dead? I mean, even so, they're not dead portion. It's portions thereof are also mentioned, and the stone walls are in this RSA as well. It's not just the trees, it's portions thereof, so branches overhanging. We have a beautiful tree that has a dip. You can put a swing on it, and it hangs around 13 Gale Village Road. Some people think, oh, what if it falls on my car? Mm -hmm. Have a forbid it doesn't. Imminent, I don't see an imminent threat there. I've seen no accidents there. Same with Rose Corner. We worry, there's been no serious accidents at Rose Corner. It's my whole tenure in town. We've had fender benders, and it's mostly people coming from Amesbury running a stop sign. And then people coming from Exeter going too wide around the corner at 35 miles an hour instead of obeying the speed limit. Many of these issues would, could be just less of an issue if we, people would obey the speed limits. It's as simple as that. And I would still like to see a 25 mile an hour speed limit on Gale Village Road, and I believe just about every resident would support me in that. Uh, just slow the people down. We're not a speedway. If you pave it and widen it, we'll become an even faster save two minutes on 108, if you get that reference. You save about two minutes of time if you go Maple, Gale Village, and don't run 108 past New Boston Road. And that's the only reason it's used as a quick in the morning. Uh, recently on Facebook, somebody was complaining they got a ticket and their husband's a hard worker and he was doing 54 and he had to get to work. I don't personally care. Slow down. <laughs> Slow down. Obey the speed limits and we'll have a lot less issues if people just obey the laws as they're written. Be good citizens, not be in a hurry to get to work. I uh, leave for work 15 minutes earlier. I, but yeah, imminence right now. I'm not worried about anything happening with those trees. There's not a dead tree, there's not a sick tree in the bunch. Um, the poison ivy, as I said, is much more of a threat. If you walk the distance and look up, and maybe eight or nine dead branches up above, whether you saw them or not, I'm not sure, but they're, they're more of a threat to me than the trees. As far as improving the Gale Village and making it safe for all kinds, I like the nice little road. It's, I moved there because it's a nice little road. If I wanted to live in a, pay, a civil, I, I moved to Newton, Massachusetts, where everything's wide and sidewalks, and we had the darkening of Newton a few years ago, and people were, Worried at the beginning we'd be overrun with crime. That didn't happen. The town saved a lot of money on lighting. Okay. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Or maybe Barbara and then? Or My name is Barbara White. I just want to know if all of the 13 trees that are proposed to be removed are all over the 15 inch circumference. That's all I wanted to know. I would say they yeah. are. I mean, I didn't physically go in there, but I, I would sit here and say that they probably all are. Okay. okay. 15 inches isn't a very big threat. Not about four or five inches in diameter. Yeah. Okay. Sir? My name is Joe Carey, and I'm a new uh, resident here in Newton, New Hampshire. Welcome. And, um, I wanted to say, you know, as someone who doesn't have the history as some of the other residents here, um, my wife and family and I also moved here because it was a quaint and quiet road. Um, it took a lot of hard work and um, just a little bit of luck for us to get here. And, um, you know, I saw the letter, you know, that came across with the residents. Uh, we spoke internally. And so I decided, not knowing a lot and seeming that there's a lot of history in, in, in the uh, position currently, I measured the trees myself, and there are 24 independent trees uh, that share 13 uh, trunks, and I do believe them to be unsafe. Um, the reason I do is because my, my wife and children walk the road every day, um, and every day I hear a story of a near, near miss with my family. And so, you know, driving, you know, over an hour to work and getting there and sort of wondering, I hope the kids are all right on the road today. Um, is my only concern is safety. So I appreciate um, for sure the importance of conservation in the environment, um, but when it comes down to it, I'm, I'm worried about my family. Um, hearing what Tony and other, uh, you know, some of the other residents have said about uh, previous motions to reduce the speed limit on the road, um, I think really for me or what it really boils down to is safety. Um, 
one of the only things that I'm worried about if the trees come down is, yes, widening the road will make it safer um, and bring it up to code, no doubt. Um, but again, you know, if you increase the width of a road, people tend to go faster, uh, especially on new pavement. So I'm okay with whatever decision is made. I wanted to voice my opinion here, um, although I would like to at least propose for thought um, the expand the pie um, mentality. So um, it would be nice to know if we do expand the road that we appropriated enough space for a sidewalk or a lane for people walking dogs and their children. Um, if not, you know, I, I guess I just look at it as you open the road up wider, you open it up for speed. Um, but again, there is the safety factor. Um, and of all of the trees, the 24 individual trees, 75% of them are within 20 to 33 inches from the side of the road. Um, there's not enough room for somebody who's walking if a speed of a car should come by uh, to get out of the way, um, especially if they have a carriage or a dog on leash. Um, and although there may not have been many incidences in the past, I know one of the rules or one of the mandates for decreasing the speed in the zone, uh, I think one of the requirements is to look at the number of incidents. Well, luckily enough, you know, the, the community at Gale Village, we haven't had to witness any of those incidents per se, um, but I'd hate to get the call in the morning that my, my family was hit by a car. Um, so I just wanted to voice the opinion, maybe generate the idea of expand the pie um, and leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have somebody else? I have a question for Mike. Go ahead. <clears throat> Mike, I have a question. <laughs> when we have snowfall, is there actually anywhere you can push the snow off that road, or does it narrow it even more because of... Narrows it even more. Yeah, because where, where those trees are right now, it's actually cut into the road box. So there's no place for the snow to go. You gotta drag it down and get it someplace off where it will get off the roadway, off the pavement. No, it'll, it narrows it down there. It's not going to get recorded. Yeah. So, you know, this won't be on the. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, Nancy Slumble, I'm from Conservation too. Now, on the right hand side, where it's lower and it's wetlands, um, the trees along that side are sort of keeping the people from ending up in the wetlands. I hope we're going to end up putting a guardrail or something there. No guardrail. Something to keep the people from ending up in the drift. <laughs> Yeah, there's That's no, mine. I mean, that, that, that requires more room, more width. I'm trying to keep it as narrow as possible right yeah. now. But yeah. the trees are keeping the people well, out of the drink. I, I, <laughs> back to the podium. Yeah. Just stay close. Stay right here? Yeah. <laughs> um, a valid point. I mean, once that end is open, and it's not that big of an area, but once it's open, there will be more of a tendency to, to go but if somebody drives off the road now, they're driving into a tree. You know, but there's no guardrail schedule for that. Uh, I don't think a guardrail would be appropriate for that area. That changes the, the whole look of that. I'm not looking to change the look of the scenic road. That would make the trees up on the other side? And go up in the yards? Then it would be retaining walls and, and a whole different situation of problems and issues. Jim, go ahead. Either the road agent or conservation, uh, what kind of trees are we talking about? Do we know? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Hi. So I, Hello. Um, I, I, my name is Deb Bunting. I live on Gale Village Road, and I just, I just want to. Um, voice my concerns as far as what I see. Um, I think that I don't, taking down, 
Taking down those 13 trees is a lot of trees. You can't say it won't change the look of the road. I hate to say it, but it's going to change the look of the road. Change, yeah. And when you say, and how much room are you gaining? How much space are you gaining when you take down 13 trees? You need four mind. feet. You're going to get four feet by taking down those roads. Mm -hmm. How are you going to do that? Because it's got a hill right there. Are you going to take all of that down? So how are you not changing the look of the road? Okay, the other concern that I have is that you say that if you don't do this, it doesn't bother you, you don't care one way or another, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to uh, jump in sort of a timeout, just so you know, this is a public hearing, not a debate. Okay, so, I'm not uh, trying to debate. Some, some back and forth that I don't have a problem with, okay. but right now it looks like everything you're saying is directed well, it's, at it's, the road I agent. suppose I can, it doesn't matter exactly. who's, it's and, just, and unfortunately can, it happens to be him, so, because right. he's the road agent. Maybe you can tell us. Okay, and everybody what I'm here concerned about is now the fact that what he said, that you know he, he doesn't care if the road gets done or if it doesn't get done, but I care that the road gets done, and I care that it gets done right. And if you can't gravel it all down and do it the right way by not taking down those, there must be another way. There has to be an alternative way for him to be able to fix the road and make it and do it right. And w yes, do it right, take down the 13 trees, gravel it down, He win-win, he gets what he wants, it's all done, everything is great, that's fine, but it's not fine. So we're all here to say that we don't want that. So we would like to see it another way. And all he's talking about is patching it if he can't do it his way. I disagree with that. I think that there's another way. I was 15, 20 years ago, not really quite sure. They paved Gill Village Road. They did a nice job. It lasted up until now the road needs to be done. He did half the job. We can do the other half, and we can do it just as well, maybe not have to take down 13 trees or 24, however, many trunks, whatever, whatever. That's a lot of, it's going to change the look of the road. And I think we're all here to say, okay, if you need to take down one or two, okay, we get that. But 13 trees. And then you're going to change the look of the road by mm. taking out the hill. You're going to widen the road. We got speeders down there now. And it's going to just get faster. And it's a small little side road. And now we want to have a wider road so that these kids can fly down even more. I understand that, I don't know how long ago, but they tried to lower the speed limit on Gale Village Road to 25 miles an hour and it was turned down. Well, if it was turned down and we ride in the road, they're gonna go faster. So what do we do with that? I seriously think that we can figure out another way to just either patch the road or take down all these 14 trees. I mean, I'm not, I'm kind of offended by the little bit of attitude that I've seen and it's, it's not right, it's not fair. We're here to try and protect the look of our road, and we got some guy who just one guy is saying, well, we gotta do it this way, we're not doing it anyway. Really? I think we can do better than that, I really do. I think we can figure out a way to make this road look nicer, keep the trees as many as we need, and make everybody happy, my opinion. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Somebody else, I think. Gunderson again. Um, I've been on that road for 40 years, or give or take 45, 50 years. The concern I have is, and I think that it really comes to that, is it's going to become a raceway. The, I don't believe there's a real need to take those trees down because they're very healthy. Um, I understand the concept of the roots being in the way. I understand that these trees have been there for as long as I've been there. Um, it is a scenic road. I do walk down it at night. I walk down it in the day. I bicycle during the day. I've never really had a problem with uh, um, having cars squeezing me off the road. I don't think there's an eminent uh, concern with any of these trees because they're all probably 25, 30 inches in diameter in some cases. They're huge. I think in general they're very big trees. Um, and I think if you could cut the road, even if you're cutting, there's, there's not room for four feet on the other side of that road where those trees are. So the consideration is if, even if they're cutting into those roots, those trees are still not going to fall for another 25, 30 years. I got a big tree in my front yard that's three quarters dead, and there was no concern with that falling into the road or anybody talking about it. And I'm just, I really get concerned that 
it's going to really affect the view. It's going to affect the road as it is. It's going to increase the, the speed limit where people are going to be racing down it. They do race down it, and I've done as Tony has in the past, slowed people down because I'm walking that road every night. It's a great road. I've been on that road where I've walked from end to end and no cars have come at late at night. Um, and I just think if it, if it, you, they're going to pave it anyway. That's going to increase the speed for some of these people racing through and cut through. The concern I have is, again, it's going to ruin the features of the road. Um, we've got deer running through all over the place. And I just think taking all those trees down is just going to affect the whole view of that road. It's going to affect the view all along that whole stretch. So I, I, I would prefer not to see them come down. Thank you. Somebody else? I thought I saw another uh, hand. To Pam, was that? I was just going to ask one more question. More fees, if I may. Sure. I want to know if there's alternate ways. I want to know if there's different ways besides that one way or no way and just patching. Is there any research done? Are, is there going to be any research done? Is there another way that we can make that road repaved and not have to take down all the trees and widen it by four feet and, or just patch it and walk away? Um, I want to know. Okay. Is there any, anything done? Is there anything being done? Hi, and thanks for having the hearing tonight. Um, I'm Pam Brown, live in Newton. Um, I'm just concerned that the town and the school district work together because that was mentioned as a goal last March during the campaign. Several people said we should coordinate our efforts as we move forward, and my concern is buses going down the road. I live on uh, Wilders Grove Road, which is extremely narrow. It's 10, 15 mile an hour speed limit. We have had accidents there, despite the very narrow uh, road we have. Um, but we don't have buses going down there. We have a bus turnaround. Um, the school district has experienced decline in enrollment. And if we want our town to grow in terms of families moving to our town, we need to make a few minimal adjustments, such as widening an already existing road. Um, I think it would be extremely helpful. These buses carry students not just from one road, but from roads all around our towns. And um, I know how quickly people drive on these roads, and I see buses all the time. I think it's reasonable to take these trees out. This is an extremely heavily wooded area. There are lots of trees on both sides of this road. It's a beautiful road, but trees grow quickly. So I would urge you, if there's no other solution, to remove the minimum number of trees to widen it sufficiently for the Thank buses. You. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else that wishes to be heard on this subject? Nancy? So are you now a resident for this? Part? I'm a resident okay. at this time. My name is Nancy Wrigley, and I live at, um, on Maple Avenue, and I've lived here for over 45 years. I walk that road a lot, um, and it is very narrow, and I don't know how many times I end up in somebody's yard because there's two cars coming or a motorcycle or whatever. And my feeling is, is people pay high taxes. They want a nice road. They don't want something that's narrow and dangerous. And we do have buses coming and going all the time. And I totally agree. I think that's very important that we have the safety. Uh, there are a lot of children and a lot of people with their dogs. When I go out, I run into people all the time. And I think it's very important that we can go out there safely and not have to worry. There are plenty of trees on that road. And if you look at the majority of these 13 trees, they go very, very high up. There's hardly any growth halfway down. Um, and it's very dark. It darkens it. When it rains, it takes a long time to dry out. It's just not a good situation. You go out walking, you're getting bit by mosquitoes and, you know, whatever. I walk up Nordic Woods, and it's beautiful. It's wide open. It's sunny. You don't have to worry about somebody being out on the road. And 
Um, to me, it's important to me, like I said, I've been there for over 45 years. I feel it's important that we all have the same um, um, option of having a nice paved road, something that you don't have to worry about, and you don't have to worry about two cars coming and going and buses hitting each other or whatever. Maybe it hasn't happened yet, but I guarantee it will. And my solution would be to make sure that the police department does monitor that road, stop the violators from speeding, because I'm they speed on Maple Avenue, and I don't dare walk that road anymore, and it needs to be addressed. Maybe if it's wider and it's better, then maybe we can get a lower speed limit on that road and keep the cars from flying. But to me, it's important. I pay high taxes. I want a nice road that I can travel on, that I can walk on, that I don't have to worry about, you know, potholes and, you know, having it be deteriorated. Right now, it's, it's terrible. And it's not good for the cars, it's not good for the people. And you walk down there, you, you have to take a chance of spraining an ankle on some of those potholes that are there. And I feel, you know, all the residents deserve a nice paved road, and it would break my heart to have Mike go somewhere else and do somebody else's road and not do this road. Maple Avenue's been worked on, Gale Village, the other end of it last year was worked on. There's been a lot of these scenic roads that have been worked on that nobody has made even a mention of. And I think it's to everybody's, you know, where you live and whether or not it affects you. And I, I just feel that this is important to our community and we all have the same rights to have a nice neighborhood with nice roads and not have to worry about cars or, or people getting hit. So that's my answer. Thank you. Trish? Just to clarify something that was said earlier, understand that a scenic road, um, a landowner, uh, somebody mentioned, oh, you know, people moved here and they understood the restrictions that they couldn't do things. The town cannot prevent a landowner or a homeowner from doing what they want to do with their property. Um, it's when we get to utilities and road ma maintenance and electric companies, when they come in, they can do whatever they have to do especially if it's an emergency. In this case, Mike didn't want to go with that route. He wanted to come before everyone as a hearing. But again, we're only talking about the trees that are actually in the town's right of way and not even all of them. Um, that was one thing I wanted to clarify. The second thing is uh, somebody mentioned other roads. Uh, I'm going to bring up Heath Road as an example. And I've been on conservation since 1999. That particular development, the conservation did work with that particular developer, and we actually flagged trees and said, you know, please cut these, don't cut these. In some cases, there was an issue um, with where the tree was and sight distance for a, a driveway. Conservation worked with planning board, you, you probably remember. So these are things that maybe you don't know, but we do try to get involved. In some cases, on scenic roads, Landowners have come to us and said, you know, I know we're on a scenic road, can I do this? And, and we'll work with that homeowner. So I, I just wanted to clarify those two points. Thank you. Anybody else we haven't heard from yet? Go ahead. No worries. Um, I, I support. Just uh, if I, you hi, weren't here, but we need you to sign in as well. Okay, my name's Holly Lynch. I'm uh, the owner of 13 Gale Village Road. Uh, the week I bought my house, Mike and his crew did our end of the street. And they destroyed, destroyed a pine tree on the edge of our property. A beautiful blue spruce that was 50 years old was one of the reasons I fell in love with my house that I bought. He said, we need to do this. We're sorry we did it. We didn't mean to wreck your tree but we have to widen this road so that we can plow it in the winter so that people can drive on it. I drive that street every day. People walk their dogs on that street every day. I get that the road needs to be widened and I get that the other part of that road needs to be paved. What I would ask is that there be an evaluation, take the broken trees and leave the healthy ones. Take the trees that are covered in poison ivy so that when my neighbor is walking her dog, she doesn't have to rub up against it. But be a little bit more selective. 
Don't just grab every tree. It is magical on that end of the road. When you come around the corner and you go under all of those leaves, and in the fall, it is stunning. If we take all of the trees out that are marked, we're going to lose the aesthetic. So I think, I think there's a compromise here. I think that there can be a compromise here. There are some d diseased trees that need to come down. But I don't think that every tree that has been tagged to be removed is necessary to be removed. And so I'd ask for a reconsideration on what you pull out of there because it is stunning. And if you take that away, you're going to change the aesthetic like you did with my blue spruce. Thank you. Mike, is that the minimum 13 trees that she's referring to? Or can you go less? You know, I can go back out there and, and reevaluate it. I have no problem with that. I'm going to be shocked if I find anything down. It's a width issue. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's from edge of road to edge of road. And the ones that I laid on that side all fell within that zone. So I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you they want it back. <laughs> yeah, at this point. <laughs> Yes, yeses or no, we can like re. Yeah, you know, but no, we can throw them in. <laughs> right. um, I have no problem going back out there and reevaluating it. I don't think we're going to find, on my end of this, I don't think we're going to find a big change. Maybe one or two of the trees I can leave. Listen, I've sat here for the past 40 minutes and listened to the residents. And I started my, my little speech by saying, it, it, it really, at the end of the day, doesn't affect me. I leave that road the way it is, I move to another road. But I've heard a couple of the residents here ask me tonight, is there a compromise? I can't, now, I'm an elected town official, just like you guys are. So it's the totality of the town, not individual roads and not individual res residents, it's the whole town. So I have to look at the taxpayers all together as a group in this town and where we're going to use the money and we're going to use it wisely. If I was to keep that road the way it is, the width, the parameters, I don't want to predict the future because it, it would scare me. But if I go put that road in, knowing it's narrow, knowing, this is, this is the, the key to this conversation, knowing that it does not meet DOT parameters or roadway traveling for that class road, and there's some type of an accident, God forbid there's a fatality, I'm not going to be standing at this podium having a conversation going, you know, geez, maybe we should have made it wider. I'll leave it the way it is. We'll patch the potholes because I'm not reconstructing the road. All I'm doing is maintaining the road. I have no liability on that end of it. But if I start rebuilding that road and I don't rebuild that road in, a, in a, an adequate drive lane, there's a liability issue, and I'm not going to allow the town, myself, or anybody else <coughs> to be put in that position. That's pretty much it. And again, I'll close by saying, we pave it, we take the trees, we don't pave it, we leave the trees. I'm good with any decision. But you understand where I'm coming from. I'm not going to put a lot of money into that road for the reasons I've just explained. It is my choice. It is my choice. I'm the elected road agent in town, and I'm going to do what's right for the totality of the town, not individuals on one road. Because I go through issues on every road we go. Every road I repave and rebuild, I hear for two weeks. They speed down the road now. All right, you know what? Let's just leave every road in town the way it is. Potholes, bang, you lose your front ends. I mean, that doesn't make sense. No, no, I'm going to maintain the road. But you have the choice of not rebuilding it. Well, you just heard the reason why I'm not going to rebuild it. I'm not going to rebuild that road and keep it at 16 and a half feet wide, knowing that that is not an adequate travel lane for two vehicles. Well, it's your choice. That's not what you're saying. Well, well, no, it's, it's the DOT's choice. It's parameters that are set for a Class 5 road. No, nope. no, nope. DOT, I'm never going down that road. 
DLT will never know I did the work. The issue will be if there's some type of an incident that comes down later on down the road and some attorney comes and takes a tape and measures, you say, we built this road. It's 16 foot, nine inches wide. Who did that? And I've got to raise my hand and go, you know what I did? Knowingly that it was wrong, but I did it. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to do it. All right. <clears throat> Anybody else? Any comments? Jim, did you have something to share? Well, first of all, I'll echo uh, Dr. Brown's comment uh, when I was on the school board. I spent many years chairing the Transportation Committee. And Guild Village Road every year came up. The bus companies asked us to please declare it a road that they didn't go down uh, because there were too many, the potential for a major accident where it narrows was not acceptable to the bus companies. I believe they now only go down for first graders that middle school and high school students are required to walk to either end of the road and they're picked up that way versus no. No, all the, all the buses on all the routes still go up and down that road. They didn't for a number of years. Oh, they may not have for a period of time. I, I was just going to say, I've, I've been off the school board for four years now, so. No, there could have been a point in time that that was true, but it's not true now. Yeah. I, I'm simply reporting what the, the transportation committee of the school board told the bus companies that they did not, that when they were doing their routes, first grader uh, elementary school children had to be picked up in front of their houses, but. Um, Well, and that's. The buses stop at Naples and they stop at the other end, and that is going back to the 70s and 80s. And, and it's okay. still going up the road. The bus is still going up the road. The kids were. Right, because. Be, but, the but, okay, you couldn't stop. Okay, they may have gone up the road, but they didn't stop on the road because it was a, a hazard for sight. Right. Um, the, other the other comment I had to make was somebody had mentioned a lot of these trees are covered with poison ivy. Which will act, poison ivy will actually kill a tree. I'm a amateur arborist, and I've seen way too many trees in town that have been had to be taken down recently because the poison ivy, when it puts out its aerial roots into the bark, actually burrows and separates the bark from the cambium layer. And if you don't take it down this year, it may fall down next year. On West Main Street recently, there was a, a prime example of this poison ivy um, actually devastated 125-year-old maple trees. When I came here tonight, I didn't think we'd be talking about arborist type <laughs> stuff. But, but I, oh. always, always interesting here. Um, anybody else with any? So how many, I just want to take a little survey. How many houses are on that section of the Gale Village? Roughly. I just want to see what percentage of Gale Village is actually here. Are you talking yeah. about the area that's still not paved, which is half of Gale Village Road? Well, I guess the part that you want to pave, I guess, right? Uh, I'd say there's 10. That'd be right. So how many homeowners are here that are uh, affected in that section? One, two, three, four, five. So it's like 50% are here and 50% aren't here, six. But keep in, keep in mind, I, I don't, I'm not to jump in on you, Larry, I'm not sure where you're going with that, but it doesn't affect just those 10 houses. It, visually, it'd be their front yard for the sake of this conversation. Mm -hmm. But everybody that commutes that road, Nordic, I I Maple, a anybody, it, it affects. Um, so I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Well, it affects them. They should have been here at the meeting, though. No, it's for the whole town, is what he's well, saying. Well, the whole town, right. It's a town road for everyone. Yeah. It's pretty much the residents of Gale Road, and we're spending no money to do it. 
But, and, and, and I appreciate that. I mean, I, and this isn't the first or last time I'm going to go through it for a certain road in town. When I did it, matter of fact, you live down there, Wildlands Grove, the culvert down in Wildlands Grove. There was a lot of heartache, a lot of conversations, a lot of meetings, people didn't want to change. The culvert was collapsing, and, and most of the people that lived there didn't want us to touch it. We love it like that. It's beautiful. It's been like that forever. Well, the reality is the pipe underneath the ground is collapsing. And one of, it, one of these days it's going to fail and the road's going to collapse and it's the only way in and out. So after conversations and meetings and so forth and so on, the rest is history. We rebuilt it. And I think, you're a resident down there, I think the end product came out, everybody seems to be happy down there. It's a change. Nobody likes changes. Well, some people like changes. We did get 91,000 from the state, maybe. Yeah, for the drawbridge. For our bridges. Um, anybody else, any further comment? You know, I, I, will, I will ask this question, because it was asked of one resident, I think she had to leave, is, you know, what are, what are the other options? And I'm always open to hearing other options, but I'm by no means an expert in roads, but I would, I would think you only have so much space to work with, and sometimes that means taking trees down, right? Unfortunately. In, in the options, I'm not sure who the woman was. She did leave. Yeah. She did leave. But I, I understand how she's viewing this, because there's always multiple options. There's always different ways of going about stuff. The problem, as I stated a little while ago, listen, I'll shim and overlay that road. We'll get 10 years out of it. But I'm not going to do a complete reconstruction, which is the way it should be done. Gravel it, reshape it, put drainage in it so the water sheds off the road, because it's still only going to be 16 foot 9 inches wide. And if I do that, as I stated a little while ago, I'm putting a road in that isn't adequate. So we're better off if we're leaning towards leaving the trees, then that road stays the way it is. We'll overlay it and call it a day and you'll get eight or 10 years out of it. <clears throat> and in eight or 10 years, when we're working on another road or, or trying to rebuild another road, that, that's just gonna, it's gonna take a number. And there's a sequence of numbers and whenever we get back there, we get back there. I can't tell you when that's gonna be. I have a question. It's one thing I haven't heard mentioned, so I figure I'll throw it out there. Mm. Has any thought or consideration been given to turning it into a one-way road, which would keep it narrow? Oh yeah, I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think. Yeah, I, I listen. You can open up that conversation. I'm going back on that chair. Uh, right. I have to ask the question. You know, if the trees are so important and necessary, but we want to construct, reconstruct, and make it a better road, why would you not want to go there? I mean, what, what would be the downside of, other than forcing people to go in one way and out the other? Only? Because you're going to upset one half of the road or the other, depending on which way you have to yeah, come Yeah, you're, you're going to, you, listen, you, you, you might make a few people happy, but I can assure you standing here, you're going to aggravate a whole bunch more than you're making happy. They just, it, I mean, you can pursue it. I mean, I'm not saying don't pursue it, look into it, do the research on it. I, I'm just, I'm not. Well, I've seen it done. I, I oh, it can be done. I've seen well, it well, in well, we did it, we did it on, we did it on, on a section of Ghoul's Hill because they were speeding up there. Right. The, and, you know, they were using that as a cut through. That, for the record, it doesn't save you any time. Just for people that continue to try to take that route. And I'd say 50% of the cars still go up the wrong, the wrong yeah, way anyway. Yeah, no, they still go they up always do it in front of me. Right. Yeah. But I, 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 it, it's something you can certainly look at. I, I have kind of a comment or question type in between here. Sure. So if we keep the road at 16 and a half feet wide, repave it, yep. now we're going to have cars speeding on a 16 and a half foot wide road, making it even more dangerous, correct? I mean, that's my uh, yeah. opinion because uh, yeah, the no. road's smooth and narrow, it's not, they're just still going to go, if it's a smooth road, they're going to speed. 
My, I'd rather have a wide road and have them speed than a narrow road and have them speed. It just seems more safe to me. But well, we, we, listen, we try, we, try, <laughs> we try to limit the speeding to begin with. <laughs> but I'm but just it's saying, absolutely true. Right. Every new road that's rebuilt or paved, they, they speed on it. It all of a sudden becomes, they know there's no potholes. They know they can fly up that road and, and, and pretty much have a nice travel surface to get whatever speed they can get out of it. I, I wish I could say that that figures into my thought process when I'm rebuilding roads, but it, it I doesn't. know it doesn't feel, it's I'm just saying for the, for the public. Right, right. Now you're gonna have a narrow road that's nice and smooth and people speeding on it, which seems more dangerous to me. You know? I mean, my wife, and she walks up and down that road all the time with a dog too, and she's complained about cars almost hitting her. Yeah. You know, so it's, and I'm, just so you all know, I abut the road, so I'm not gonna vote this. Actually, I can't vote because I have property on the road, so. But that's just my opinions. Yes, you can vote. Well, he can choose to yeah. do whatever he wants. Um, okay, so we have another commenter. Mike, if you, again, don't go far. No, we'll be right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, my name's Debbie Most, and I own 11 Gale Village Road. I'm just looking for a clarification. My understanding in the beginning was you said there were two options. One of them was to patch every year and the other one was to take down the trees and completely redo the road. Now, do I understand correctly, you're saying there is a third option, which um, I don't understand about paving, but which does, um, overlays it, maybe might be the word I heard, mm -hmm. that has a chance of um, eight, 10, 12 years, something like that, is that? So there are actually three options that are available to you without digging down and destroying the roots on the trees. Did you two without digging down and recrofiling? Two without, the okay. Yeah. One of them is the overlayment, Just and the other one is the annual patching of the pot holes. Right. Pot holes. Right. Okay, thank you. Thanks. I have a question, Mike. Write my name. If the road is failing now and you do an overlay, it's kind of like putting a second row of shingles on a roof that's collapsing, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. Every, every deficiency that Yes, please. <laughs> you, you're getting the hang of it now. I am. I am. It takes me a while, Matt. <laughs> Every deficiency that's in that roadway now will come through within a couple years. Will it be as bad now in a few years? No, but it's eventually going to fail. There's, there's, there's no way around it. I mean, a shim and overlay is nothing more than an elaborate bandage. Looks good for a couple years, and then it fails, and you end up with all the problems you have right now. What kind of money are we looking at? To do what, to, for what? Chip and overlay versus patching. Um, probably 25% less to do a shim and overlay. With the shim and overlay being like a 10 year? Yeah, and I'm, I'm throwing 10 years out there. I'll be honest with you, most roads, yeah. You don't get 10 years out of it. Yeah. The, in the books, in the books, yeah. pavement pre preservation, they say if it's done right and you do crack selling, you do all the maintenance that goes along with that, you could get up to 10 years. So, and then the, if you redid the road, cutting down the trees and all that, we're looking at how long would we get out of the rebuilt road? I'll be dust. <coughs> yeah. Right. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's right. going to be right. Right. E easily... Because that's not a high volume of cars. I mean, I'm sure if you live on the road, you think it's a high volume of cars, but it, it isn't in comparison to class five roads. So, so you, you should be, and no guarantees, you get 50 years out of that road. So Maybe more. And, and I'm just gonna, gonna say, and this will start to uh, indicate to people my thought process, but if you're, a, if you're a taxpayer in this town and somebody's telling you that we're gonna take one solution and you're just gonna to have to pay for it again mm -hmm. 10 years, or there's another solution that you're gonna pay for this time and Mike's gonna be dust when it's, in other words, forever, it's gonna, you, you just have to understand that, okay? That's how voters are gonna look at things, okay? I'll just put that out there, you know, just to, and, and let me clarify, and, and please, everybody in the office, I'm not doing this to be spiteful to anybody on the road. I, I, I have no skin in the game when it comes to that. But 
I can't tell you I'll be back there in 10 years. I can't back, tell you I'll be back there in five years if it fails. Yeah. We have a, a road rebuilding schedule that we yeah. did with the town engineer, and there's roads in town now. Uh, the best example is Chase Road. I don't know who, who goes down Chase Road. Chase Road is destroyed. Yeah. And I'm still not scheduled to be there for three years. Right. And I feel for the people that live on that road and the people that commute on that road because it is destroyed. But it's, it's, this, is, this, is, this is the determining factor. And I mean, we just, we just had a, um, a, a groundbreaking for the new fire station and the fire chief made the indication, and this blew me away when I heard it, for those who were there. The second building municipal building ever built by the town of Newton, New Hampshire will be that new fire station. That's the type of finances we deal with in this town. Okay. Everything is, you know, we ask people to slash their budgets all the time. We, we really penny pinch is, is the fact of the matter. And I don't want to start a debate on this and you know, people, people do pay a lot in taxes. I'm a taxpayer too. Most of it's going to the school. Whatever it is, and don't quote me, 33 million to the school, we get three million to work with. And after we pay the few people we have here, then we pay for, you know, fire and police, and then your, what are you, the third budget, third highest budget? Yeah, th yeah third or fourth. Right. And then it snows, and your budget is yeah. You know, if we have a good bad, snowstorms, if we have a bad winter, you know. I so. mean, to sum it up, and 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 I don't want to segue into something. You break out on the highway budget, yeah. And I'm selfish. I'm only talking about the highway budget. Um, it's 181 dollars a year per taxable household in town. Mm -hmm. That's all the funds that come out of your tax bill to fund the highway budget. 181 dollars a year. Which in, in the very few years I've been in this role, I think the two biggest things I hear from residents on is one is the transfer station and the second is the roads. That everybody has an opinion on the roads. In the winter, stronger opinions, but then the other opinion is the safety of the roads, whether it be the potholes, whether it be the fact that people will say to me, usually it's my wife and in the passenger seat when we go down a road, and I don't go down Gale Village Road that much, but I'm talking about other, I grew up in this area. I go down other roads like that that sort of go like this, and the first thing my wife says is, they gotta do something about this road. Why do they leave it this way? This isn't safe. So, that's my comment. Any other comments? Go ahead. I read a letter recently that that road was talked about years ago, that men and women just like us got together in a room and collected a bunch of roads in this area and deemed them scenic mm -hmm. to protect them and to save them. Mm -hmm. And so you're talking about revisiting something 10 years down the road for us and saying, we don't want to have to revisit this in 10 years. Well, we're revisiting a decision that was made before us and we're about to abolish a decision that was made before us. And I just think that it needs to be given a little bit more concern. Um, I think there is a compromise that can happen. The trees that are tagged are tagged on one side of the road. It's mm -hmm. not tagged on the other side of the road. Shift the center of the road a little bit. Pave three or four inches. They stole a foot from my front yard to widen the street in front of my house. They can steal a foot from the other side of the road so that they don't have to take down every tree. There is a compromise. We can do this. It is gorgeous, and I, you know, I'm sorry that your wife doesn't like them, but it's beautiful, and it needs to be preserved to the best of its ability. And I'm going to be passionate about this. Wife's going to start texting me in a second. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? And, and Mike knows because I came out. I came out and yelled at him about one stealing the foot in front of my house. I'm like, I just bought that. I paid for it. You right, took it. Right. Right. And my pine trees are gone. Right. You know. And I'm going to adjust. I hate change, but if you rip off that beautiful canopy out of that area, you're going to ruin that section of Gale Village Road. And 
you're going to widen it and open it up for more development. And we don't want more development down there. We want those trees more than we want people. That's why we moved there. So, I mean, Mike, the, uh, you know, she talked about a compromise option. The, the, again, I mean, I'll go down there with a tape and, and see what, if anything, can be done. The problem was on the other side. No, no, on the other side, I'll, I'll speed it up, the whole learning process. The other side has the utility poles. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to give you Unitil's phone number. <laughs> and in four years, when you call me back and tell me you're having zero luck with them moving utility poles, we'll talk about it again. Okay. It just won't happen. Unitil is, you know. L listen, we have, po we have poles in town, many, many poles in town. Unitil put a new pole in. Fairpoint hasn't taken their wires down to get the pole out so we've got more room in certain areas where they put new poles in it. And that's been, some of them, six, seven years, years eight years. They, they're pretty independent. Will you remeasure it? I will. I'll remeasure it. Um, if I come up with a different finding, that's fine. I, I, I mean, I've spent some time down there. I've gone three or four times. I, I mean, in fairness, I'll go one more time. But my paving season is quickly coming to a halt. And if this gets dragged out any longer, I, I, got, I got a bill and I got to go someplace else to get some other poor road in town reconstructed. So I think we're kind of coming to the end of the public comment portion. And I believe, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, if we close public comment, can we still vote in a, another selectman's meeting if we give, if we give, uh, Mike, time to, you know. We have, that, we have that option. The public hearing is purely for public input. Yep. For us to gather information and make a decision does not have to be made immediately. Now, if they wait another two weeks to vote, Mike, is that going to affect your paving? Yeah, I mean, I, I <laughs> should have mic'd you up. Just I'll just sit here. I'm going to bring the chair over here. <laughs> Um, I, you know, Bob, I can't, I can't tell you specifically, I mean, like any, every contractor, this time of the year, the paving contractors get overbooked, overbooked, overbooked. I, 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 it'll affect it. How it affects it, I don't know. I mean, if I was to call them, your next selectman's meeting's in two weeks. Yep. If I was to call them, the, we're now at the third week of September, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got I to gotta tell you, it, there's, I'm going to need an answer before that. And again, I don't care what the answer is, but I need an answer before that because I have to line up the paving crews and get, get stuff done. Typically, I like paving before school gets back in because I have the whole school bus issue on roads that we start working on, and that becomes a horror show. So, not to be evasive, but I don't, I don't you know, two weeks down the road, I don't know how successful I am going to be in getting stuff done. So let me do this. I'm going to declare the public comment portion closed unless there's somebody else who wants to speak. And then I'm going to ask the board if they have any, any further input here, any ideas, any motions. I'll open the floor to that. Well, I can say I'm not <coughs> prepared to make any decision today. Okay. Um, I would like to get some more. I would rather put it off in, um, till next year, in, any paving or anything else till next year, than to make a quick decision. I, I think we owe it to the people on Gale Village Road as well as the other taxpayers. Um, because whatever decision we make, whether it's to take the trees down to reconstruct or to do an overlay or to do the patching. Um, it's tax dollars, you know, whether it's short money this year, but more often. So we have to go back and we're patching every year. So that's still costing taxpayers money. If we do an overlay, it lasts five years. Now we're going to do another overlay. Costs. I would like to see a cost analysis between the various ways that we're doing it as well. That's what affects the whole <coughs> thing, is 
what's it gonna cost me? You know, not just you on Gill Village Road, I'm on Route 108. But my tax dollars are gonna pay for whatever is done on Gale Village Road. So I wanna know what I'm getting for my tax dollars. Well, I think Mike said if it doesn't happen this year, it's not gonna happen. Because he's gonna move on to the next roads. Even if it has to be put off five years to get back on his plan, I would be okay with that and him just patching it for those five years until we can make a decision. Rather than, because cutting those trees down is not something that you can regrow the next year. You can't regrow them. So there are plenty of roads for our road agent to work on. I say let him go over to one of the other roads and we can look into this in more detail with more time without feeling pressured to make a quick decision. Jim? Having grown up in Newton and for many years friends on Gill Village Road, quite honestly I want to go back and see the, where the, tree, the trees that are actually marked. Um, business has been very good lately and I haven't had a lot of time to go out there. Uh, but yeah, I really want to see what trees we're talking about. I also want to look at how the trees are actually growing because tree roots can be highly destructive. If anybody's seen pictures for, like from Indiana Jones when they show trees that have actually growing through the tops of temples, that actually does happen. Um, tree, tree roots can be one of the most, almost as destructive as freezing water. So that all has to be taken into account. I'd like to give the road agent time to go back and reassess. Um, I understand the, the rationale of why you're taking them down on one side, now that I know about the telephone poles being on the other side. Some of us remember when there was a whole stretch of Gale Village Road that had no telephone poles. Um, the one comment, the only comment that I hear it often on the planning board, I heard it tonight, that you know everybody wants to preserve the character and they don't want there to be further development. My only comment, and I'm not being facetious, I'm not being sarcastic, if you really like the uh, big open land, when it comes up for sale, make sure you buy it. Because all too often, people go, oh, I love the neighborhood, and Bambi runs across the road. And the 300, you know, the 100 acre lot that's down there, if somebody who's really concerned about maintaining the, the character of the road doesn't purchase it. It goes to a developer and the, there's nothing, you know, it, be, it becomes a development with 25 new homes. And the only other final comment is, Mike doesn't have the ability to take somebody's land away. Um, yeah, I, I didn't take anybody's land away. Um, state of New Hampshire, from the center of, center of roadway, the minimum road is two rods wide. A rod is 16 and a half feet. So that means from the center of road, 16 and a half feet out both ways is the town right of way. So I didn't take, I know you think it was your property that we encroached on, but it's actually the town right of way. No, that's a face. So I'd say, maybe. You are the face. Oh, I'm the face. The oh, yeah, no, listen, I'm the face from mailboxes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Um, Larry, did you have any further comments? I, I don't mind if, he, if you go out and reevaluate and we, if we can have a quick meeting next week, but do we have to have another public? Say he comes back and says, okay, I can do it with 10. Do yeah, we have to have another public meeting? I, I don't, uh, public hearing you're public talking hearing? about, I don't think We're so. not continuing the public hearing, which is what the planning okay. board does. Okay, that was my question. I, I'm gonna, can I, you, you guys know me. I'm just gonna say what I'm gonna say. I don't think I need another week. I don't think I have to go back out there and evaluate. Lisa, you brought up a concern. Jim, you brought up a concern. Here's my Wheels in government turn very slowly. Yes, yeah. they do. Oh, yeah. Very slowly. None of these questions are going to be answered in time. The research isn't going to be done in time for me to do what I need to do this year. Larry, I know you're trying to speed it up a week. Mm. I, I find it very unlikely that you guys will find the, the background and the, the stuff that you're looking for 
to make a comfortable decision or to make a decision. With all that being said, I think you tell me to go someplace else tonight. Well, my only concern, now that the town knows the road is not wide enough, uh -huh. somebody's walking their child down that road and car comes around the corner and hits the child, now who's liable? Mm -hmm. Is the uh, town uh, liable because we know that the road is not legally wide enough and we didn't do anything about uh, it? I mean, that, that, that opens up a whole, um, you know, that's a due diligence type thing. We, we know there's a condition. We didn't do anything about the condition. Uh, um, not, to, not to throw you guys under the bus, but I'm going to throw you under I, the bus. Uh, if you guys tell me to go someplace else, I'm out of the liability. The, um, and, and really, you know, I, I know you're putting that out there as an example. The liability is the last thing. If, if that situation happened, the liability is the last thing that would, would keep me up at night. It would be somebody getting hurt. Would be what would, would do it for me. And we're talking about a scenic road versus safety is what it comes down to for me. Yeah, but I think just, that's a two, two yeah. Just to, uh, just to tap on something, I think we talked about it earlier, but the, the, the reason why you would move on from this road and not do it next year would be because your plan worked out with the engineer is, but finish my. There's a schedule. I'll fill it in, but fill in. Yeah. I know you there's, a, a, there's schedule, a schedule, but, but that, that I, I, I might have misled in, in one of my uh, explanations here. I'm going to move someplace else. If in the next 12 months or less, eight months, that it's decided that we, we take trees, we make the road wider, everybody's in agreement to some point, um, then I'd have no problem going down there and reconstructing that road, road box up, reshaping it, and do what I need to do. And I'll do that next year. I just flop sequences. I'd go, go do something else this year and go back down there next year. Okay, that's what I want to And do. I'll still go down there next year if the, the decision is made, don't touch the trees, but I can't reclaim it. Contrary to popular belief, that, that's, you know, an 1,100 horsepower machine and it will not slow down on a stump. It is going to chew those root systems to nothing on the way by. And I know, Jim, you started saying roots grow different, the uh, Indiana Jones, whatever. I, I, listen, I, it's probably all true, but I, I can't. I can't go down that thought process. I plunge that thing into the ground and we grind asphalt rocks and everything else in its way. My comment was referencing that aspect, is that if the, the trees are left in place, as those roots thicken under the road, over, if you shim it, in 10 years, Oh, oh, I just understood. Say, yeah, a yeah. Root yeah. that's an inch thick now in ten years will be a three-inch thick, Whatever. and there will be a yep. one of those lovely little fro permanent frost beams. I call it. It could that, and that could happen. Yeah, I mean that could happen. No, I, I misunderstood what you were talking about. So, Matt, back to that. I, yeah. You know, I'll go to another road. I'll go back there. If we don't touch the trees, we'll do a shim and overlay and call it a day. And I, I don't know when we'd go back there. Right, to but be honest. what you just said is you could swap, right? I so could swap. Could, if it's, yeah, yeah. It, right, so you're still doing something this year, but if, if we took however many months to figure out another approach, we could still schedule it for next year. Yep. Okay, yep, I just want to make that clear. Yep, the, you know, the thing, the thing with me would now, be... Now we have to do another public hearing on the next road? We probably... <coughs> It'd probably be up to us whether we do the public hearing because um, we, you know, we've done it. This is what we're supposed to do. Uh, the thing with me is, you're absolutely right. The wheels of of municipal government turn slowly. We had a ton of people show up tonight, which is awesome. Okay, for anything, we're normally talking to an empty room for those mm -hmm. who who don't know. Um, I would like to see this many people show up for a meeting to discuss, and maybe I'm signing you up for something you don't want to do, thanks, but thanks, Matt. this many people show up for a meeting to, to figure out what the compromises are, what options do we have? Like, we only, I said it before, we only have so many resources, you know? We have, 
we don't have like full-time people to just put on this subject to go and do a study and all that stuff. We're paying somebody, we're doing that. I mean, what would really help would be if concerned citizens got together with the road agent or whatever and, and just kind of hashed this out and then presented back to us and then we can vote on something and decide to, to fund or whatever. Just throwing that out there, I have no um, ability to order anybody to do that, but I'm just saying if we have this many people show up for this subject, you would, I would think we could get a lot of people to uh, tackle this issue. And I'll leave it at that. Um, but it sounds like we, we won't vote on anything regarding this subject. Uh, Tony, real quick, because I want to move on to other things. Yeah. I, Jim, you asked what kind of trees are there, and you talked about roots. Mostly hardwoods, a number of oaks. Their growth spurt with their roots are over. When you look at Newburyport red brick sidewalks, they put them in the 70s over young trees. Young trees grew, that's what happens. These are established hardwood trees which have a tap root. I, like I said, I've worked I, with I, trees a long time. Oak has a tap I, root straight down. It's not a pine, it's not a Norway maple. The tree that fell and put our power out last year came 20 feet off the road out of the water, the muck. It was a swamp maple that had shallow roots like this and the, the whole root system came out. Oaks don't tip over. Oaks don't ruin the roads. Oak goes However, down. Tony, you have to agree with me that if they're mentioning multiple trucks out of one, one stump, that secondary growth and therefore you are actually changing the root patterns but they don't creepy oak. crawl sidewoods. Actually, oak will put out lateral once you've cut the original tree. So if you're talking about secondary growth, which is what you get when you have multiple trunks, then you will have lateral rooting. And these are mature trees. We, these are trees like these. These are not growing trees. These are not little bitty trees that you're cutting and just sending them. That happened a long time ago. Those trees are the same size they were when I moved there. Their, their root growth spurt is essentially done. And they're tap roots, again, I'm saying. They're not lateral roots that are going to buckle your roads. That road would have been buckled in the 80s, 70s. Once you take down an oak tree and the, the secondary growth, the tap root dies and it becomes lateral. It becomes so lateral I'm, I'm roots. So I'm going to break in here yeah. because the sort of the tree discussion is not doing it for me tonight. Um, the, I would just ask the board, what do we want to do to continue this discussion? When should we continue it? What do we need? So you need a motion to have Mike skip Gale Village Road this way, move elsewhere to another street, and we'll pick it up next year. I don't know that we need a motion for that. I don't, need that. I don't think well, we need a motion. No. It's, it, it's his, his schedule. I, I um, would just like to request from the road agent that um, when he has time to provide me with those cost esti estimates for the scenarios? Lisa, Fair request. <coughs> Lisa, um, remember, I'm not a paid position. I'm not a paid position. So everything I do is on the... I mean, I'll get to it. Well, it won't be any time soon. That's why I said when you have time... Okay. No, I have, I I have no problem that. doing that. I'll do it. Uh, We'll leave it open-ended. When I get a minute to, to acquire that information, I will, and I'll pass it along to you guys. I am actually good with that. Like I said, when I make the decision, I want to know that I'm making it with all Fair of enough. that. Fair enough. Fair enough. You are my best resource for the costs of oh to get this work done. So, so here's my issue. If we leave it open-ended, mm. open-ended in municipal government means we're never going to do it. and. Either we're never going to do it or we're going to have this same meeting a year from now and be in the same exact place. So, so my whole thing is, and it sounds like what I'm hearing from the board is nobody wants to vote on this tonight. Correct. I do not. Okay. So is that But we don't want to correct? tie him up. He wants to do a street. He'll move no, I think that's already, unless I misunderstood, that's already been decided. I think that's, okay. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going trying, elsewhere. Okay. I'm trying to yeah. save the last hour. Are you? you know what I mean? Like, we just spent an hour on this subject and we're not going to vote on it. So, I'm trying to save this, the usefulness of this last hour to move forward with something. So, what I'm saying to the board is, I'm open to suggestions. Are we, are we putting this on the agenda for an upcoming meeting? And if we are, what are we going to 
<clears throat> what are we going to hear at that meeting that's different from tonight's meeting? Let's put it on the agenda for April. I, I was just going to say, <laughs> April would be appropriate since from what we've heard now, since we can't give him a decision because we don't have all the information. He's going to move on. He's going to do maybe Chase Street. Um, mm. But that, 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 that's the road agent. Good try. So, that, so but the, the road agent makes that call. So, so we, we pretty much, we're saying that it's going to be our next year's schedule. That gives us plenty of time to gather our information. April is an appropriate time because that's when the road agent is going. So spin still gonna spin be the wheel trees. of roads and which roads are we going to get done this year? Which roads can we afford to once we've ha we have a budget or not have a budget? Um, so so let, me, let me paint a picture for you. It's April, and we're meeting on this again. It's and, still and I said we <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. might not be here. <laughs> Two of us might be somebody different. Right. And now. That's why I said April. <laughs> and, right. And, <laughs> and now. <laughs> and so now a new board gets together, and two of them go, I have no idea what you're talking uh, about because I wasn't here. So let's, let's have another public meeting. We have the other public meeting. It's still 13 trees. Yeah, that's well, you, you never more know what will happen during the winter. When the road gets a lot worse. And the road gets <laughs> a lot worse. Pray to God nobody gets hurt. Um, I mean, I just think... My major problem is the fact that once we touch the road, we then open up ourselves up to liability. If Mike just does maintenance of patching, not shimming and overlaying, but patching, it's a pre-existing pre non-conforming situation. The minute we touch that road and we do not bring it up to code, then the town's liability is something that I could not support. You know, if he stood in front of us and said, yeah, I'm just going to make the roadbed the 16.9 inches that it is, I'm going to grind down my 14 inches, bring in gravel, lay down a new base coat, lay down a new surface coat, but it's still going to be that width. I'd be looking at him going, I think we need a new road agent because you're, that's a waste of money. You'd be creating more of a liability issue than you'd be solving. And that's, we're elected to be wise and prudent with the town's money first and foremost. And I think that's what Mike is trying to be. He's saying, these are your options. You either patch it, the shim and overlay is going to cost 75% of what the... Uh, no, 25, 25%. It's not 75%. Oh, I'm sorry. You I thought you said it was a 25% between 40, I mean, it's hard to, to come up with an exact number, but... Because oh, you I, don't know what the ton, tonnage is to do the shim. You know what the tonnage is for overlay. Right. But it's, it's you know, it's I just, 30, I, 30 sorry, percent I, of what a reconstruction is going to be. It's cheaper. Okay. No doubt. So no. once we... and. Ms. Gonyer asked for those numbers. We don't have them tonight to be able to say, yes, you know, this is small money. However, any amount of money in the town of Newton is not small. Um, I would have a problem doing a, a shim and overlay, leaving the trees existing, and having the road destroyed within five to six years, and having to spend that same amount of money again on trees that are getting wider and wider every year and therefore encroaching even more and more on the, on the roadway. So April is probably the best time to, to look at this. Once we've had a chance to actually see, gather information, and yes, it may be all the same people back in the room again, some of them going, well, you know, I thought about it, I still have that same position, I thought about it, I've changed my position, or I thought about it and it doesn't affect me. No. But at this time of night and this time of year, we're getting to the point where, you know, the road agent basically needs a, a yes or no tonight and we don't have the, the adequate information to make that decision. The lights on. Sure, but we'll need your yeah. 
those charges. Yeah. Um, huh. I just want to question the logic behind that um, counter argument only because I think it's sound save for one thing. Uh, you acknowledge that by taking action on the road, you obviously uh, take ownership of the liability. Um, so if we patch it and don't make it the right width, we'll be out of code. Therefore, if anything happens, you're liable. Um, I think that's sound logic, but I think that there's something missing, which is if you do nothing, perhaps tonight, um, you took the choice to not take control of the situation and change the safety issue only to avoid liability, whereas maybe not tonight, but somewhere in the near future, the board has the ability to take control, change the situation and make it safer for everybody, no matter the cost or how many trees come down. Ten, 13, our feelings on it are, are probably not as important as the statistics and the data <coughs> on safety. So at the end of the day, I think Mr. Burrell is making a good point that people have come here, we've all expressed our opinion, would like to see something happen. It is convenient to put it off until next time. Um, but again, you know, having voiced my opinion about safety, um, how long is it until April that I have to worry every day? Um, so again, I play the game that you guys play a lot at work myself, um, and I think risk mitigation is important. However, I think you know, taking responsibility and stepping forward, being proactive with safety is more important. So thank you. I would like Thanks. to make one response. Um, one of my concerns, I did go to Gale Village Road, by the way. I don't like to talk about something if I haven't actually seen it. I've gone to Gale Village Road. I've seen the trees that have been marked for removal. I have also seen that ditch, if you will, the wetlands that are right behind that um, group of trees that are selected for cut down. As our road agent said, um, any sort of a guardrail or retainer or anything like that isn't part of the road construction plan. So before I would say, yes, let's cut them down, I would be very concerned about, you know, if we do take those trees down, you know, it, it's not just cars slipping off the road into a, that ditch. I mean, how deep is that ditch? I think this gentleman said it was like six feet deep. That, I mean, that puts a car on its side, flipping it over onto its roof. There's potential here. So these are things that I see. I, plus, hearing the concerns here about having the trees down, I don't want to make the decision tonight to say, yes, chop them down. Because that's not something that next year we can say, oh, no, let's put them back. Okay. You can't put them back. So I, I'm not prepared to make a decision today for that reason. I want more information. I want to see what the consequences would be if those trees were removed and that ditch was made open. So I don't have that information yet. Understood. Thank you. I just have a quick question for Mike. <laughs> I had to do it to you, Mike. You look too comfortable. <laughs> I don't know. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> I thought I was done, but go ahead. Just out of curiosity, when you plow the roads, how wide are the plow blades? Uh, 11 and a, between 11 and a half and 12 feet. And the road is 16 and a half feet, so that leaves you? Uh, not a lot. Okay. Yeah. So what mean, happens when there's a car we, coming we, the other way and you're coming this way? And yeah, somebody, somebody's waiting and it probably isn't us because we're pushing snow. Um, well, listen, we get it done. We can get it done. Everybody in this room knows we get it done now. Mm -hmm. That's not why I came here. That's not why I've proposed to take those 13 trees down. I've explained to you why. And not, not to eat up any more time because I need my beauty sleep, to be completely honest with you. You do, actually. Uh, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> You've got to get together a little list of stuff that you, because I've lost track of what you're all looking for, you're all looking for. I, I, I don't know what answers I'm supposed to get for everybody now. Yeah, and so I'm just putting together I'm, a little list after the meeting. We can see that you get what we want, yes. Yeah. All right, um, so it seems like you're gonna send Mike a list of what you want, and then we're gonna get back together, I stop saying we, the board is gonna get back together in April and discuss the topic. 
That's what we're it's looking a at. Logical timeline. Yeah. All right. And just so you know, the from now to April, that's because e even if we were to decide to have this conversation in October or November or anything, the road agent wouldn't be able to do that kind of work at that point because we're coming into winter, and that's why the April, because now we're coming into the right season again. And and I'll just sort of restate what I said earlier. Um, town politics is often a spectator sport and really should not be a spectator sport. So if there is the interest and the passion in this room tonight, I strongly recommend somebody should kind of rope it all together and meet and try to work together and maybe be a resource that we can use in decision making and then when April comes along, we're not rehashing the same meeting and 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 having like no decision at that point either. I so. know oh, April. I plan to have all the information that I need. Right. So I'll just l leave it at that. But I think we're leaving this topic at this point. So. All right. Thank you. And I, what I always say at this point is, people who are not interested in our next agenda items, do not be afraid to get up and and leave. We won't, we won't hold it against you. Thank you for coming tonight.